Okay, uh, that welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. So excited to talk to Dr. Kate Seuss in the house. She is a preventative medicine and implant advocate, yeah. illness advocate, and biohacking. So let's talk about, we got some stuff to talk about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are the chicest biohacker. I, think <laughs> I, know. I don't know what biohacking even means, but I'm going to take it. So tell us about what you do. Okay. So, well, firstly, I'll talk about what biohacking is. Um, the concept is sort of this, you know, in a innovative, um, you're looking to optimize and feel as good as possible. So some people get into it because they're already into like athleticism and pushing their limits, but other people mm -hmm. get into it because they don't feel very good and they're looking for pretty much anything that they can to give them that like extra. So I think for me that's kind of why I know so much about so many different modalities was from going through my own, you know, struggles with just not feeling my best. So right yeah. right now I'm on the I'm doing a ketogenic just for a minute because I feel I need more fat in for my brain and for everything and I was one of those on a terrible diet in the 90s where we had no fat whatsoever, right. we messed up everything, and I still feel like my fat intake is low. I want to try and do the ketos. I've never done it before, and it's been interesting. I feel fine. Yeah, how long have you been doing Not it? Not very long. I don't even know if I've totally gone into uh, the ketogenic state yet, because it's only been like four days. Oh, okay. So there's definitely some ways you can like speed that up using exogenous ketones, but we can talk more about oh, cool. that later. Awesome. <laughs> so tell us some tips on how to biohack our lives. Okay, well, um, let's see. I think something really popular that we work with a lot in, the cl in my clinic is IV therapy, but we're doing a lot with different vitamins. Um, however, I will say that's not like going to give you the long-term solution. It's more like a crutch. You know, if you're doing really bad in the moment and you need like that extra boost, but it's really going to come from the daily nutrition, the things that you're taking into your body uh, like on a regular basis and then making sure that it absorbs. So, so it's, uh, uh, Helps with the hangover. <laughs> yeah. Not necessarily the wrong well, term lifestyle issues. Well, I've seen it issues. on Instagram. You know, the celebrities with the drip right in right. there for hangovers or performance, performance. whatever it might be, or just yeah. pure exhaustion. Totally. Of course. And there are certain things that you can do IV through an IV that will give you like a two to three week boost in energy, stuff like that. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think the best, easiest, most inexpensive biohack I could recommend to pretty much everyone on the planet would be water fasting. Um, research shows if you know you do a good even 24 hours, but the research is done at 48 hours of water alone. It just completely resets your entire immune system, wow. and you know gives your body a break so the liver and gallbladder and kidneys can clean themselves. You it's know they're very not dangerous wow. though. My father's a naturopath, and he talked about water fasting. He said it's one of the most gnarly things, and that mm -hmm. people will go into. Um, there, that's like a there's a name for it, I can't remember. But basically, they get a. a place where they just get so sick because they have so many toxins and so in the water fast is like a very extreme. So the, if you are suffering from chronic illness and you have a lot going on, um, I would recommend doing a supervised water fast in their facilities. Like there's a great one in NorCal where they do that, where they're monitoring you, they have a full staff. Um, you're right, it can be very intense, but mm -hmm. you know, it's the same thing if those people who have all those toxins, like you mentioned, when they do these commercial detox blends where they're taking in, you know, um, like herbs and, and different um, amino acids that, that push detox, they can have the same mm -hmm. thing happen. And that's something that I've seen with a lot of women with breast implant illness because their system is overloaded with all these chemicals and toxins that their body has sort of been storing into mm -hmm. tissues over the many years that they have the implant. So when they explant, wow. their body immediately starts to detox. So they can't handle like like an official detox because it's too it's too intense. This right. is such an important conversation, especially with breast cancer awareness month yes. and really treasuring our chest. Yes. And so many women in my life who have had implants at, after about eight ten years have just become chronically ill, chronically really? fatigued, yeah. they're not feeling right, and their intuition is saying, something is wrong here. Right, mm. yeah. Well, But a lot of doctors aren't even listening to that. Yes. And they're being told they're crazy. Yes, yes. So that's part of why I'm here. Um, there's a, a huge movement of women who understand breast implant illness, who are on board, who are spreading the word. But really, like we're here today for all of the women who don't know that they have breast implant illness, who are suffering from various you know, autoimmune diseases, um, chronic fatigue, uh, fibromyalgia, who go to their primary doctor or maybe go to their plastic surgeon because maybe they've heard and they're told that um, they have an anxiety disorder or the pain is in their head or it's normal to feel, or, or they just have an autoimmune disease and no one's mm -hmm. linking it to their implants. So, you know, um, as far as empowerment, like we're, you know, I want to encourage everyone to just get informed and um, 
not to give up and not to give up on your body or like accept subpar kind of conditions. So what are some mm -hmm. of like the telltale symptoms that mm -hmm. you're witnessing in the patients who do have this illness? So I'll focus on what the FDA says is a complication since we're going to be like research and back based here, um, which would be if you go on the FDA fact sheet for a mentor, like, you know, uh, silicone implants, it says under complications within three years that one in 300 women can develop something called anti-nuclear antibodies, which is an um, early marker for connective tissue disorders like lupus and such. Mm -hmm. So, like, we have a, a young woman in our office right now who's dealing with this, and she it started after the silicone, so she's having widespread pain. and. Um, that showed up on her labs. It's the only thing abnormal. So we're hoping to help her. But it's interesting process. too, I think, for patients to, to recognize that intuition isn't FDA approved, but you need to trust <laughs> yeah. your body. Yeah. No, seriously. So well. yeah. 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 You know your body better than anyone, yes. and better than the doctor that's sitting in front yes. of you. And if something is telling you something isn't mm -hmm. right, yeah. listen to that. Yeah. Whatever it might be, even if your symptoms aren't on that list, you know yourself it's important. Get a second, get a third opinion. Yeah, I totally. And even like thinking about your own journey, surveying the past, like looking back where you were maybe before you had them and like what were you doing? What did you feel like every day? And and kind of, you know, making that that little mm -hmm. audit of of maybe what has changed because it's easy to settle in and get used to feeling a certain way, especially mm -hmm. when it sneaks up on you over time. Over time. So I'm curious to know because implants are, I mean, there's different types of implants, mm -hmm. but then there's women that are putting all of the injections yes. in their face. Isn't that the same? Because it's made out of plastics, isn't it? Um, no. So there's a lot of different things you can use for the face. Um, the most common thing is like Juvederm, which is a hyaluronic acid based molecule. So that's a molecule that's naturally occurring in the body and it kind of draws in water mm -hmm. and like gives that plumping effect. And so they figured out a way to cross link it, but it's very different than silicone. And in the manufacturing of silicone, um, they're using a lot of heavy metals like mercury and lead and mm -hmm. arsenic and platinum and aluminum and like tons of neurotoxic chemicals, um, which is all, this is all like publicly available information. Mm -hmm. um, fill, uh, facial filler is, is just, just hyaluronic acid, so there's no added chemicals. And then there's other forms we could discuss. And they have dangers and complications for different reasons. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I'm not seeing them having a systemic you know, effect on like your overall health or turning on some of these bad mm -hmm. genes. Interesting. That's interesting yeah. because fillers are typically what's already naturally occurring in your body. It's just almost like putting them on steroids, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. It's like a controlled effect for sure. Maybe not the Botox. That's a whole other so conversation. That would be another conversation. <laughs> yeah. um, but again, Botox is administered locally. Um, it can have effect on the liver. So if you are having dysfunction, I'm not going to like recommend. But you know, there's a lot of uses for Botox that like don't get talked about. Like we have a patient who ha uses them to control rec uses it to control rectal spasms that she suffered after getting a mesh inserted in her body, mm -hmm. um, which basically adhesed and caused the nerves to entrap, and so she has no control over that without Botox. Wow. So there are situations where you have to kind of pick the lesser of two evils, mm -hmm. I suppose. Mm -hmm. So true. What sparked your interest yeah. originally in biohacking? Um, so my own experience with having breast implants. Um, before I went to medical school, I worked as a bottle hostess at a nightclub and I had a clothing company and I was doing like nothing remotely medical. And then I got breast implants and about nine months later, I was having like systemic pain and like fatigue and neurological symptoms and like a tremor, which I still haven't been able to get rid of, wow. um, which I'm way too young for. Um, yeah, and there wasn't a lot of solution. So I just decided to kind of go my own path and figure it yeah. out. So sorry yeah. you had that experience. No, it's so great. deeply grateful that you're offering yeah. mm -hmm. up, um, your services to people that need them so badly. For sure. Yeah. All yeah. Of us. yeah, and it's interesting, like as a man, I don't know how you like how do you interact with this topic? Like yeah. what do you think about with Um, I just listen mostly, okay. you know, and process. I mean I think for me, um, my highest purpose is to help people feel good. Um, and to do that in ways that have the least amount of side effects as humanly possible. That's why for me, I focus mostly on meditation and yeah. things of that nature. Yeah. Um, but I'm just, um, I'm, an, I'm a lifelong learner. So yeah. I appreciate you sharing all this. Yeah, it's great. Too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But we appreciate your work knowing that we totally are in belief of the body can do miracles. And if we get out of the way or if we cleanse and make sure yes. there's too many toxins, whatever that may be, um, always better to go with the pure route for sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. thank you for being here and for sharing your time and your light with us. Tell everyone where they can find and follow you. Um, at Dr. Kate on Instagram. Awesome. Awesome. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank, thank you, so you guys.